the server slum having just come out and the game's official release less than a month away, here's 5 things you may not have known about Diablo 4 that will help you progress smoothly through the campaign and well into the endgame. Without further ado, let's get started. Coming up at number 1 we have the rare spawns, symbolized by the white star symbol on the map are uniquely named enemies that spawn on a rotating timer. These enemies will drop loot up to their own level. What's important to note is in Fractured Peaks, the starting zone, pretty much all rare spawns start at level 20. Meaning that if we kill them while running past, we're able to give up for our 20s a lot earlier than would otherwise be possible. With a lot of the rare spawns having preset items that they're guaranteed to drop, you're able to increase your character power level rather quickly if you manage to plan around it. This is specifically important for rogues, as they can kill Serolina, the Disciple of the Dark, or the Dark Blade, which when killed twice, once before the class quest, and once after, gives us one guaranteed level 20 sword, and another potentially highly rolled sword to use while progressing through the early game. Despite what the game wants you to think, you can actually unlock the Codex of Power a lot earlier than level 25, granting us access to the Occultist, meaning that if you do roll good aspects, you'll be able to transfer them that much sooner to an item of interest. We do this by clearing the Lost Archive. I believe you can clear any dungeon that grants an aspect usable by your class, but for this character, this seems to be the best decision as the Bubble on Elite hit comes in handy for all classes. This in turn will unlock our access to the Occultist and consequentially, the ability to enchant rare gear with aspects that we find by clearing surrounding dungeons. This is particularly important if you're planning on theory crafting a build for a leveling journey at launch as you'll be able to use the aspect index already present in the game to target from the corresponding dungeons and create a functional build in your early 20s, the only real issue being the lack of gold and resources. Moving through dungeons, you'll eventually find an interactable that can be picked up and carried elsewhere, akin to the dungeon objectives. However, Sometimes it's a separate event, such as the one with the Vasted Shrine, where after picking the object up and carrying it back to the Broken Shrine, we're able to restore it and reap its benefits. This can result in multiple outcomes, one of the regular shrines or a corrupted event shrine. The latter being one of the better XP farming sources currently available in the game, yielding close to a full level per corrupted shrine. Considering the benefits of shrines present in Diablo 4, as well as the base movement speed buff they provide, it may be worth keeping an eye out for these elements as it might smooth out the dungeon experience. Another thing to keep an eye for while exploring the world of Sanctuary are these ominous looking shrines, which have a purple magic circle right in front of them, and an interactable plague that we can read. These plagues will contain a short text or riddle where the capitalized word is the clue as to which emote to use while standing in the magic circle. These marginal buffs, albeit simple, can help us while moving around the map, and once you memorize which about shrine this world, it'd be a quick and easy way to reap the benefits. Particularly useful while doing open world events such as Helltide, where replenishing your potions may be the difference between spending or losing all of your cinders. Moving on, the side quest rewards aren't exactly a secret. However, there's a couple notable ones that may allow you to speed up your progression by keeping an eye out for them. One that is particularly interesting to us is Traveler's Prayer Quest. It's a super quick and easy to do quest which gives us 2 elixirs for free, meaning 1 hour of 5% XP buff at no resource cost. The quest is conveniently placed on the path to the campaign quest and can be picked up in the Hawk's Head Tavern in Yelesna. Another super useful quest for any dagger wielding class is also picked up in Yelesna. Unyielding Flesh has a guaranteed dagger reward that will roll higher than anything can drop from mobs on average. For the class that cannot use daggers, there are two other quests which exist. One that contains a two-handed mace reward, Hammer of the Champion quest, can be found in Bear Tribe Refuge, which is conveniently placed after a slight deviation from the way to Prava as you go through the campaign questline. This one will have you enter a dungeon which will slow your progression down, but density of packs found inside is good enough XP to justify it. And a second one that most likely isn't worth doing if your goal is to speed run the campaign, but it contains a rare offhand, Fate and Blood is a full quest chain composed of 17 objectives and can be started in Kyovashad, next to the Omino Cellar after talking to Petr. Early on, one of the biggest things standing in the way of upgrading your rare items to legendaries is gold. The best way that I found, although I'm sure others did too, is that extracted aspects usually net a significantly higher value than the corresponding legendaries if you have to sell them. Meaning that if you ever pick up an aspect that isn't useful to you in any way or shape or form, you can still proceed to extract it for the extra gold it yields albeit at the cost of losing out all the materials you would otherwise receive from salvaging said item. Keeping that in mind, farming events quickly and efficiently may be the go-to strat in the beginning, 
combining good XP per hour, a gearing strat, and sustainable gold income. Troubles used as a purveyor of curiosities for the potential legendary aspects. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope I managed to share something with you that you are not aware of and that you will find useful. I'll make sure to update the description and potentially the video as well with any changes we can expect at launch if they ever turned out to change. With nothing else to add, Aranetius out.